welcome back to Future Ruins, and this is the first hiking metal video of 2024, which I'm really excited about. It's been a while since I've been able to get out and do one of these, uh, just with the new year and the holidays, uh, starting a new job, a bunch of new stuff going on in my life that uh, has prohibited me from doing much. So very excited to be back out here. So today is Friday, and I'm basically out scouting a couple of different locations for what I hope to be a place that I'm going to spend the night Sunday night for my winter overnight, first winter overnight foray. So this video is basically going to be like a two-part sort of deal. Uh, I was awarded with a four-day weekend this weekend. If you follow my channel, you remember that last year I attempted one of these and failed to do so and made a number of mistakes that I hope to correct on this video. So basically I've got two spots picked out and this is not a trail, this is an old Jeep road to get up here to the round mountain. It's not even really a mountain, it's basically just a glorified hill, but it is considered a mountain on the map, uh, just a small blip on the radar. So there's gonna be a few factors in making my decision. So today I'm basically just scoping these areas out. Uh, we just checked out round mountain as you'll see, and we're going to head to my next location, which is gonna be a little bit further of a hike to get to. And I will explain that as soon as we get there. But the idea is basically these two spots are completely different in that round mountain here is a pretty exposed and high up spot where we get a lot of views. Whereas the next spot we're going to, which is known as the China Wall, is gonna be a little bit more covered. So I have a decision that I can make uh, once we get to Sunday, which is gonna be my day to decide what I'm gonna do and head out and do my overnight Sunday night. So today the forecast in this area and the area that we're about to go to, which is not too far from here, looking at highs of 38 and it actually is feeling pretty warm right now. It's about 1130 and tonight it's going to get low into the teens and we're actually looking at getting possibly an inch or two of snow tonight. Sunday is actually going to be a really good option, I think, to do this because the temperatures are going to be a little bit warmer. It looks like uh, highs on Sunday are going to be mid 40s whereas the lows sunday night are going to be right around 20. so that is going to be an optimal condition to be able to camp for the night so i made it to the top of round mountain here and this is my first pick nice little spot i mean you got views in every direction some flat spots for tents there is a little fire ring that looks like it's pretty much never been used uh, a couple of drawbacks this is a pretty exposed spot so if it is windy it could end up being kind of miserable that would also cause problems for having a fire. I am not sure if you can camp up here. Uh, some of the signs kind of led me to think that you're not supposed to. Even though this technically is National Forest, there were some no trespassing signs, which were kind of weird, but then at the same time, it says it was for backcountry use. So it did have a mention about no camping, but it didn't actually specify where you couldn't camp. Uh, because that was like closer to the road. Perhaps this spot would be really good for a sort of stealth camp. In other words, just like come up here and be as unnoticeable as possible. So that would mean no fire and very little lights and just try to blend into the area and not give myself away. Uh, being that the road is kind of right down there, about a mile, and it is pretty easy to see up here probably from there if there was a fire so that might lead a ranger or some type of official to uh, be alerted that there might be a fire up here and they would come and investigate and that would not be fun there's pike's peak and the surrounding area here is sort of just full of just Jeep roads and old dirt roads. And a lot of people use this area to car camp, mostly in the summertime. Right now, I don't see anybody here. Uh, and then to the left there, we start to get up into uh, the Lost Creek Wilderness and the Lost Creek Peaks. 
which is where we're headed next. And also, I don't know if you can see next to Pike's Peak. To, I don't know if you can see next to Pike's Peak to the right there. There's a little tiny peak up there. That is where I shot my moose video last year. Just down below the summit here is another really sweet spot. Man, this would be a really killer spot to just come and chill because of this little overlook here. Get some views. <clears throat> Actually, there is what remains of what once was a fire pit there. I don't know if you can see it, but uh, another one that definitely has not been used in a long time, I'm sure. So. That just kind of tells me that this area is probably sort of off limits, but uh, I think I could get away with it if I was to do a stealth sort of situation. All right, here we are at spot two, and I'm gonna go ahead and scout the area out. And this is also not a trail, it is a Jeep road that is used quite frequently to get up into the Lost Creek Wilderness. And there's not actually any dedicated trail to get to the China Wall where we're going. Uh, you'll see why it's called the China Wall here in a second. I've never actually been to this spot before. I just saw it on Google Earth, and it looked like a pretty good spot uh, to shoot for in spending the night in winter. And I think uh, if you can see uh, the hill there, it's, uh, the, the wall is gonna be just on the other side. And I'm imagining that there's just gonna be a lot of spots where I can just kind of shelter up uh, for the night, Sunday night. So far I'm feeling pretty good about this. I came up to the top of uh, the hill, up to sort of a summit, and basically on the top side of what's uh, known as the China Wall. I'm above it right now, but you can kind of see down below me. I think we're gonna head probably out there somewhere and see if we can find somewhere that's gonna be appropriate for Sunday night. Uh, but first I gotta negotiate my way down here, which I don't really see a very good way to go yet. And then uh, there's a road back there that I could take back to where I'm parked. Uh, ultimately, once I find something that works, uh, it's about 2.30, so I don't have too much time before the weather is going to start breaking and uh, don't want to be out here too late. So let's go see what's down there. Okay, so that was quite a bushwhack to get down that. I don't know if you can see behind me, but uh, very deep snow. I had to tread really carefully. Um, really the only way to get through here. <laughs> So the way this place works is there's actually a Jeep road that comes in from the highway and uh, about a mile in, it turns into a rough four wheel drive road, which is closed during the winter. So it's almost guaranteed that nobody's gonna be out here if I stay here Sunday night. found a potential spot here, nestled up in these rocks. Could work out really well. And I'm gonna walk around here and show you what it looks like. Uh, nothing really established. 
so I would have to build some sort of fire pit but uh, there is a good bit of dead branches on the ground that I could use for fire and it's really cool too I'll show you because uh, you walk out and it's really open out here so if I don't have a really windy night I might be able to come and hang out here and really cool rock formations which I was hoping for um, you cannot really make out the China wall too well right now from here uh, just because of the proximity of the sun and uh, the snow so uh, when we do come back out here hopefully we'll get uh, some better views of it okay I'm gonna go ahead and mark this spot on my GPS and continue on the road basically gonna go back over and around uh, making our way back Assuming uh, nothing goes wrong between now and Sunday, I will be back to spend the night here. And that should be interesting because it's pretty desolate. Nobody here. Hey, what's up you guys? I'm back and on my way to the spot to set up. It is Sunday and weather is quite different today than it was when we were last here. There's just a, a low cloud overhang that's been really just lingering since I've been here and on the way in. So the highs for today were just above 40, I believe, and then the lows for tonight are forecasted to be around 15 degrees. Originally there was uh, a good bit of wind in the forecast, but it, that looks to have subsided. And since I've been here, it's been pretty calm. So hopefully that will continue for tonight, but I've got some ideas for the campsite. Uh, being that the wind is coming in from the west, uh, I'm gonna get set up where the rock wall is uh, blocking me from that direction and uh, also get a fire pit set up in that area as well and uh, should be enough shelter if it does get windy tonight. So I think it's gonna be fine.
about five o'clock. Uh, I'm all set up and ready to get my fire going. And the sun came out for a few minutes and then was gone. But uh, it is a good sign. It does look like the, uh, the clouds are starting to lift a bit. And hopefully we'll get, uh, get some tremendous views of the uh, stars tonight. So anyway, thought I would go ahead and uh, give you guys the grand tour of the site. And I think things are gonna work out really well if it does get windy uh, the way that I set all this up. Came up into this little nook here to set up my tent. And uh, the wind is supposed to be coming from that direction, so I uh, should have pretty good cover there. And kind of just show you inside. So I built this little fire pit and uh, kind of purposely put it right there against the rock. It's going to be good cover, not going to have any wind coming in here, and I'll be able to set up my camp chair right next to the fire and uh, stay warm all night. So. Walk away from my campsite, I have this really big open area and uh, it should be really cool to come and look at the stars out here tonight if it's not too cold. But uh, the rock formations where my tent is, uh, they just continue along this way for a ways, uh, these, these formations. So it would be really cool to go and uh, go explore them. Maybe if we have some time tomorrow, we'll go do that. So that's it for the sun. I think I'm gonna go ahead and start getting my fire going and uh, set up the speaker and just uh, relax, jam some tunes and try and stay warm. Isn't that the most awesome fire you've ever seen? Pretty killer. I don't even know what the temperature is at this point, but right here, it is nice and toasty.
<sighs> Morning. I don't want to get out. It's cold. I slept okay, but maybe four or five hours. And, uh, then it got cold. Uh, I was okay for the most part. My hips were cold. It kept waking me up. I got all my layers on under here, and, uh, it's probably partly because of my, uh, sleeping pad is not, uh, insulated for winter, so. Man, I had the weirdest dreams. It was one of those dreams where it was like, it took place exactly where you are, except you weren't actually awake, you were dreaming. And I was right here, and it was windy out, and I heard, uh, I heard somebody calling my name up outside. Well, it's about 7 o'clock, so I think it's about time to start thinking about getting up. I don't know if you can see that, my water's frozen. Oops. It's definitely warming up, so I'm going to start uh, delayering and uh, get everything packed up and hit the trail again. I think this time we're going to go uh, make the full loop to get back to the truck. Uh, beautiful day. Man, I had the craziest dream last night. It was one of those dreams where it takes place where you actually are. And so I was in my sleeping bag, shifting back and forth, trying to get warm. The wind was uh, pretty loud. And all of a sudden the wind died down and I heard a voice out in the clearing calling my name, called my name twice. And so I shifted over and unzipped the tent door and looked out and I immediately woke up in my sleeping bag. But I still thought that it was really happening and I called out, hello, who goes there? And of course nothing, it just took me a minute to realize that I was just dreaming and that it was nothing. <laughs> a little creepy. Other than that, it was a pretty quiet night, but that freaked me out a little bit. It immediately made me think of uh, if you know the movie The Thing, it was based off of a short story called Who Goes There. So, I think I had some sort of weird thing last night. So on this trip, I've listened to the new Isan record like three times. And uh, Isan has been pretty hit or miss for me over the years. Uh, I mean, The Adversary and Angel were both okay. Um, I don't even own those. Probably need to go back to them. Uh, and then After is the one that I really love. I think After is a fantastic record. It gets a little crazy with the saxophone at the end, but uh, for me, that's my favorite, Isan. Then he put out Aramita, which was kind of like, some of it was good and some of it I didn't like. And that's kind of been the case for everything he's done since then. Like Arctis was really good, but uh, you know, there's a few songs I'm just not as into as others. 
And then the record after that, I, I can't even remember the name of it, but I didn't even really pay attention to it. So I'm definitely gonna go back to it because this new record, this new Isan is, it's fantastic. Um, it's the, his most, I would say probably, I would say probably his most ambitious recording to date. Uh, it's very orchestral. Um, and apparently there's a companion uh, album of just the orchestra version of the music, which is really awesome. I haven't listened to that yet. It's another prog metal affair. I mean, that's kind of where he has existed since uh, doing his solo stuff. But this one, I don't know, it's just, it's kind of amazing to, to think about what went into the recording of it. So I'm kind of excited to have an Isan record that I can really be excited about. Uh, last night also spun some other new stuff, the uh, new Spectral Voice record, which is the guys from Denver, uh, Death Doom Band. And I'm not, I didn't really get into their first album, but this new one is really grabbing me. Uh, I like it a lot. It's uh, pretty intense music. And then the new uh, Holder record is another one I've been digging. Uh, I picked both of those up on vinyl uh, at the record store recently. Uh, I'm gonna go see Holder in uh, March for that decibel tour. All right guys, well that about wraps her up for this weekend. And if you made it this far, thanks for joining me on this winter excursion and hope you enjoyed the experience. And as always, if you dig these videos, please like, subscribe, shoot me a comment. Let me know what you think. I think 2024 is going to be a big year for my channel. Now that I'm well into my first month and a half with this new job, uh, things are going well and I'm going to get a lot more time off than I used to get, uh, including the whole month of June. Uh, so that means I'll definitely have a lot more time to uh, get out and do more videos like this. All right. Thanks again for watching. I'll catch you guys next time. Cheers.